Listen to me. We got Dodge City by the tail. You people are worse than trees. We've got your pussycat hides nailed to the wall. Did you see around for Marshal Earp? He's 50 miles away from here by now. But don't worry about that. We'll send him a message. We'll tell him we've got his town. Let him come and try and take it back. The western frontier town of 1876 could take tornadoes, blizzards, and even Indian raids in stride. But there was one catastrophe which the bravest townsmen feared. This was an invasion by hoodlum gunfighters bent on punishing the town for trying to maintain strict law and order. In all the turbulent annals of Dodge City, the day George Morris and his men captured Dodge is rated as the most terrifying experience in the memory of its citizens. Hold it! Curly Brooks George. I know. You didn't stop a hundred feet from the fire. You know the rules. Come on in. You wanted some news in the big rush, George? Not that big a rush, Curly. Well, give me it. I sent the telegram to Earp. He should be leaving Dodge right about now. Where's Bassett and Tillman? They're chasing horse thieves into Kingman County. You dead sure? I saw them on the North Trace, 40 miles from Dodge. Good. Earp, Bassett, and Tillman were the only ones I was worried about. They're the Johnny Laws of the fast guns. That only leaves a handful of deputies for us to take care of. But remember, we follow the plan exact. What is the plan, Curly? We drift into Dodge by twos and threes. A couple of the deputies will be on patrol and a couple more at the jail. Me and my boys will nab the outsiders while you take care of the jail guard. <laughs> Learned it by heart, didn't you, Curly? But remember, as soon as we got the Johnny Laws locked in their own jail, I'll give you the rest of the plan. That's what I'm anxious to hear. The rest of the plan. Oh, it's a good one, Curly. The Morris is alone, Dodge. And that's a lot of loot to wake up. Liquor and money. And won't them dance hall gals be glad to see us? <laughs> Did you put my saddlebags on the horse? Yes, sir. You're gonna take the butt line, huh? That's right. Might have to do a little long distance shooting. Why don't you let me go to the Springs? Because I owe Wells Fargo a favor. I used to work for him, so I owe him a real personal favor. That stage holdup crowd is going to be scattered all over Kansas by now. And with Bassett and Tillman gone, you're leaving just four deputies. Well, there's six counting Sheriff Bassett's men. But what's really worrying you? I don't know. I guess it's been too quiet here. Well, that's natural enough. Santa Fe's working double time, and the cattle drivers are just now leaving Texas. I'll be back in about three days, Mr. Masters, and you hold down the fort. Yes, sir. Good luck, White. Argument didn't work, huh? No. Wells Fargo telegraphed him to trail those stage robbers as a personal favor. You know what? He likes Indians and Buffalo Hunters and Wells Fargo and... And us. Shake out of it, Bat. Those prisoners ain't been fed breakfast yet. Chasing stage robbers. He left Sam in charge. Why? What's wrong? Caught this drunk over in the Sheriff Bassett's office tearing up a bunch of papers. Hey, haven't you got a patrol on the street? Put him up. Hey, what is this? Don't get rash, son. <laughs> All right, drop your gun. Where are the keys? Top drawer. Put them all in cells. What about him? He's out cold. We'll get him later. George at the mayor's office by now. Thank you, take my advice. You let things run along as they are for a while. Who are you? Shut up, Over. That's the mayor of this mangy town. Grab him. 
You'll hang for that. Ah, don't worry about it. Who are you? I'm George Morris, and I just elected myself mayor of Dodge City. How do I look, boys? You look Not awful bad. good, George. <laughs> Take him to jail and get the outfit together on Front Street. Where's Marshaller? Well, he's miles away from here, and now you're going to jail. Out with him. All right. No, no listen to You can't. Pick up that boy's deputy and throw him in with the rest of them. Oh, no. Get off that horse! got his town? I'll let him try and take it back. Mr. Beeson, Masterson's gone after Earp. He got clean away. All right, so he got away. Is this whole town going to stand around and do nothing? Morris and his boys are calmed down after a while. Look, there's a shotgun. You go fight him. But, but everybody should fight him. We can't expect Earp to come back here and run the Morris gang out all by himself. They're brave, Curly. They're gonna fight us. All of them together ain't got sand enough to fill an hourglass. You own this place? He is on it, Curly. We want all the cash you got and all your liquor. Well, now, that's a joke, isn't it, Mr. Morris? I don't joke. All right, set him up. Catch your breath. We'll let your horse graze for a while. Go over here and sit in the shade. All right. You sure Masterson got away? Yeah. He admits it. He says Morris wants Bat to get to Wyatt. I hope Wyatt keeps his temper and goes for the army. There ought to be enough men in this town willing to fight. Nobody to organize them, Mr. Mayor. Well... Why it'll go to the army for help? It's the only sensible thing. Not if he gets sore. Shut, Shut up! up. That. You talk long enough. And I reckon the only thing to do is for us to ride to the fort. About a half a squadron of cavalry, and then, huh? Don't you think they'd come? Oh yeah, they'd come. Well then, why don't we get them? Well, because I don't think the folks in Dodge City are that cowardly. Would you want to live in a town that had to be rescued by the army from a pack of hoodlums? Well, maybe the townspeople would fight. Yeah, but you can't go back in there, Wyatt. Why not? Morris will have a sentry on all the roads. Let's ride to the fort. I'm not ashamed to ask for help. Oh, but I am. You know, not too long ago, Charlie Bassett and I had a poker session argument about what we'd do if something like this happened. Worked out a little map of the city. Let's see if I can remember it. Wyatt, Bassett and Tillman are in Kingman County. Morris put the sheriff deputies in jail. Now, what chance are we going to have? Well, this is outline of the town. This is the east side over here, the storm drain. We leave the horses here. It'll be dark by the time we sneak into town. We'll hold up until first light. Go against 20 men in broad daylight? Well, night shooting's no good. You hit too many innocent bystanders. What's the matter? Don't you want to hear the rest of it? No, sir, I don't. We're bound straight for Boot Hill Cemetery, and you want to draw me a map. Come on, let's rock. Load her up, boys. Don't be bashful. We got lots of wagons and plenty more horses. We got all the loot that they'll carry while we'll head for south of the line for a little fun with the girlies. Hey, you brave jayhawkers. Where's your great martial art now? He knows we're here. 
Why don't he come into town? I'll tell you why. Because he's yellow, just like the rest of you. Ain't we stood enough of this, Mr. Beeson? Nobody in Dodge will fight for me. Not having her Pierce taking all the heart out of him. Shotgun shells in your pocket. Where does the tunnel come out? Near old man Richard's house, head of Front Street. That's five blocks from the jail. Come on, hurry up. Stay out of my dance hall. I know all about you, Morris men, and you wouldn't be doing this if Marshal Earp were here now. Stay out. <laughs> I'll give you a hand up. Out, huh? Light up. Sure, old man Richards wouldn't mind you using his clothes. He's just about your size. What's the idea? It'll be light in a couple of hours. These clothes on, you might have a chance to sneak down to Chalk Beeson's saloon. He's our best bet to organize some help. Meanwhile, we can be memorizing their moves in case this doesn't work. Cover you. It's one. Hello, there, fella. Who are you? I just got into town. You wouldn't know me. You law officers? Take off your hat. I said, take off your hat. Fat Masterson. Where's Wyatt Earp? I don't know. Where's Wyatt Earp? I don't know. Why? Hold it. Hit him. With your fist. No. Come on, out the back door. It's there. It's wider. He shot me with the bud line. Him and Masterson ran out back there in the alley. Dave, tell George the wide herbs in town. Rest of you into the alley. Now. Basement of Jameson Hotel. We go through here, climb up to the roof of Beck's drugstore. 
Warren, that's no place to make a fight. Come on. All right, boys, come on. There. Come on, boys, hurry it up. Come on, the sooner we get that loot loaded, the quicker we can get across of the line. Remember them dance halls and them girlies. They're waiting for you. Let's go. Curly says to tell you White's in town. What? He came back. We got him a mattress and corner in the cellar down the street. Cornered, you sure? Yeah. Yeah, well, I ain't. We'll round up all the boys and plug every rat hole. Never mind that. Herb's back in town. Come on, let's go and finish him. You think it's true, boss? Yeah. I heard that bunt line special three times. There ain't another gun that sounds like it. Well, ain't we gonna help him? How many fighting men you got in the back room? Eight or ten. Well, that's not enough. Go out the back way and see if you can round up about, oh, ten more. But, boss, if we could bushwhack them from the doors and the windows... No, no, they shoot too good. Go on, seven or eight more at least. Okay, boss. They know better than to hole up in the cellar. Curly, we've wasted a whole hour looking down rat holes. Now let's do it systematic. Take every building between here and the Long Branch and really ring it out. Right. Why don't we try to make it down the back way to the alley? Uh, the alley's full of them by now. Why don't we come up here? Because it's the end of the line, Mr. Masterson. Two men can't take a town. We make our fight here? No. We wait for help. If it doesn't come, we go over the roof to the sidewalk. What then? Pull that wagon in here for a barricade. That's good. Curly, maybe they're hiding here in the drugstore. I think they went up the alley to the Long Branch. You crazy? What would they be doing at Beeson's place? A lot of town boys been sneaking in there. I'll take some fast guns and go. No, up. stupid! It's Earth that we're after. Now let's go look in the drugstore. We're running short of time. Here. You watch the skylight. If they start coming up, let them have it. I'll watch the stairs across the alley. We'll wing as many as we can, then jump for the sidewalk. They came in here. Hey, maybe they're hiding on the roof. Go on. This is all I can find, boss. Well, that's better, but still not enough. We'll wait and see how much fighting Herb does. There's a ladder over here. I better cover it. Jim, Charlie, up the stairs over to the bootmaker's shop. You two, come on. Up to the skylight. All right, Herb, if you're up there, I'll give you a chance to surrender. All right, boys, take them. Here they come. Set fire to the building. Give me that shotgun. They won't come up anymore. If they do, use your handgun. I'll give you one more chance. Then we're going to burn the store. Some torches, boys. We'll burn them out. It's Wyatt, and he didn't bring the soldiers. He's a fool. No, sir. A brave man. Hey, 
Get a light. Sure. You're so scared you can't even light a cigar. Uh, crummy nerves, I guess. Thanks, anyway. Brave bunch of deputies, Mr. Mayor. Put your mug over here against the bar. I'll light it for you. I had cabbage guns. Help! And Help! Keys. Help! No use, Sam. You can kill all of us. Yeah. Drop that pea shooter. Now get back inside, all of you. Come on. Bring me some more shells. Reload the bundling. line. They're going to burn us off here. It's a side ladder, a few doors down. We'll take that to the street, try to stampede those horses over there. Hey, Earp. If we burn the store, it'll take out half the town. How about it? Morris, come on out in the street. I'll come down and you and I can settle it. We'll count to ten, then we start the fire. You hear that, Earp? You gotta count to ten. Start counting now. Let's stay on our feet, huh? All right, boys, light them. Here he comes. What are you men waiting for? Well, nothing, Wire. Just trying to get more men together. Morris has been whittled down. We'll be an even fight. Well, what are you waiting for? You want him to bring you out of house and home? Of course not. We'll fight. Well, then get at it. I'll be starting across the street. You men aim low and cut him down. I'm going after Morris. I want to hug him. Fine. Oh. Throw her up out of here. You hear me, Beeson? If you don't, we'll come in there and get you, too. Go for your guns. There's two of you. There used to be 20 of you. Which leg do you want? The left one. I'll take the right one. We're waiting, Mr. Morris. I'll get somebody to help you over to Doc McCarty. Mr. Morris feels like doing any talking. You can tell him we've taken back our town. You really think we're going to get away with pretending to be Texas outlaws on the run? We ain't got no other choice, Mr. Masterson. Couldn't ever blast Butch Henry and his boys out of there with a posse, so if he can't lick them, you can join them. Sure, but... What happens when they find out they have Wyatt Earp and Bad Mantis in the camp? That Butch Henry has 19 notches on his gun. Well, 
If we get caught, then either Mr. Henry's going to be carving two more notches or he'll be dead. At least we got an even chance. Wyatt Earp, as marshal in Wichita and now in Dodge City, had met some of the top guns of the western frontier. He had outfought the notorious Manon Clements. He had outfought John Wesley Harden in a final showdown. He had persuaded Clay Allison to run from Dodge City rather than face a duel with 45s man to man. But the case of Butch Henry, cattle thief and killer, presented a new problem. Not much was known about him, and he chose to await a battle with the law on his own fighting ground in the rocky wilderness known as the Salt River Bend. Bush Henry gang, they, they attacked us in the brush and they, they killed Rance and the Herb and then they... We'll take him to Doc McCarty and Doc. I'm going to see Wyatt Earp about this. <coughs> and we're small fry in the cattle business, Marshal. We couldn't take the law into our own hands if we wanted to. And we're asking you to organize a posse and go after that gang. I know you've had trouble with cattlemen from the big outfits, but... None of our boys. Well, that's got nothing to do with it, sir. It's just that, well, technically, Sheriff Bassett has the jurisdiction. I know he's homesick, but, well, his chief deputy, Bill Tillman. He's not here, Marshal. He rode to the fort this morning to check a Cheyenne outbreak down south. Well, I guess it leaves it up to me. Good. Well, you think that Butch Henry's holed up at the Salt River Bend, huh? We know he's there, Marshal. And he's got 300 head of our steers. Salt River is a good hideout, and we're going to need quite a few men. Well, I never like to use a posse, and unless it's a last resort. Marshal, Butch Henry has killed at least 20 men. He's on the run from East Texas. They've got good peace officers in East Texas, but they didn't take Butch Henry. I'd like to take a crack at it. Well, we're in your hands. I reckon this is one of the few times that any cattleman ever came to you for help. Yes, sir, it is, and I appreciate it. I want Butch Henry as much as you do. And here's another thing, Zach. We've run off all the beef we can rebrand and sell, right? Well, a couple of the boys can hold them here. So why don't the rest of us pull a raid on Dodge? They tell me them gambling houses are just loaded with cash money, right? No. What do you mean, no? George Morris tried it. He's a big-headed fool. He tried to take over the whole town. I mean a quick raid. Wyatt Earps and Dodge. Oh, now, Zach, don't tell me we're scared of that Cowtown Marshal. Nineteen notches, and I'll cut me number 20 for Mr. Earp. Zach, you ain't scared of Earp. Never laid eyes on him. Well, neither have I. But that's no reason to be taking him so serious. Who's he ever killed? Look, a man don't get an honest reputation without no notches in his gun, right? I'll think it over. Where you going? Check on the cattle guard. You think about it some more, Butch. But I figured on starting it, son up. No. Aren't you going to tell me what this is all about? No sense in worrying you until it's necessary. Well, Marshal Earp, I just got him finished. It's a good joke, you and Mr. Masterson being one of a train robbery in Texas. <laughs> what? $2,000 reward from Lord Pickett and Bill Jepson, alias the Amarillo Kid. These men held up a Texas and Pacific train and killed two county sheriffs near Fort Worth, Texas. Signed, N.B. Averill, Captain Texas Rangers. What is this? Morg Pickett and the Emerald Kid. That's you and me. Thanks, Mr. McCabe. It's a real good, fast job. Thank you. Remember, keep this to yourself, otherwise you spoil the joke. Oh, oh I won't say a word, Marshal. Come on, Mr. Masterson. So in order to keep from having to take a posse into the Salt River Bend, I decided to try for an inside job. A character like Butch Henry, being this far north, 
Probably could use a few extra hands. A couple of characters like Mort Pickett and the Amarillo Kid stand a good chance of being hired on. You'd be sure to remember those names. Only one thing wrong with the idea. What's that? I know Texas and I can talk the language. But that's brought you for a Yankee in two minutes. Oh, Sonny, ain't you never heard me talk Texan? Well, I heard so much Texas talk up here in the north that I'll be dang gone if I don't seem to be using that accent in my sleep. Besides, they call me Silent and Morgan Pickett. So, kid, you'll be doing all the talking. All right. Well, what if they start asking you about places in El Paso, Fort Worth, and San Antonio? Well, it's a long ride to Butch Henry's. You can tell me about them on the way. Well, supposing they do let us join them. Then what? Well, it's not too big of an outfit. About nine or ten guns at the most. Anyway, they'll be busy holding those steers in the bend. I think we stand a pretty good chance of taking Butch Henry and a couple of his men if the others don't butt in. Suit yourself. Well, smoking them out with a posse would be a lot worse. When do we start? As soon as we can get the right clothes together, we got to go in there looking like outlaws. You know? <laughs> For God's sake, don't take that Bud Line special. They've never seen you, but I'll bet you they've heard of that gun. <laughs> hey, thank you for reminding me. I feel uh, kind of naked without it, though. Ah, oh boy. You want some water? Yeah. Hey, you were telling me about uh, Big Kate's place down in Waco. What did she look like and what do you remember about her? She's not so awful big, just kind of thick like. She has blue eyes and dark hair. But don't get me wrong, she's got a real good figure. She runs a saloon and dance hall. Her girls' names are Midge, Susie, Anna Mae, and Delores. Well, I'll tell you, Sonny, that's a mighty heap of remembering. What about the uh, Catalanis down in uh, Fort Worth? Oh, that's a long story, Moe. Price of the herd is 4,500. That figure's uh, twelve fifty a head. Oh, that, that's too steep. Oh, a lot of the brands have been messed up in the changes. Forty-five hundred cash or it's no deal. Sorry, gentlemen, I can't go above three thousand. Why, you ain't allowing for the risk I run. Hold it. Zach, see how much he's got on him. What are you doing? Shut you up. You can't do this Where for me. Where do you keep it? Now he got visitors. You, you let me alone. I but... said shut up. I got friends that'll take care of you. Five hundred get... measly bucks. You get out of camp quick. Oh, this is just plain robbery. Oh, no. Not with strangers around. Didn't you hear those warning shots? You get on your horse and don't look back. That's just plain robbery. Right, oh, shut up. Get up there. Who are you and what do you want? You Mr. Butch Henry? I ask the questions, you answer them. They seem kind of hostile, more. Reckon we better try our luck with another outfit. Don't rush off. You boys on the run? Could be, mister. You forget you saw us and we'll forget we saw you. Come on, kid, let's push on. Nope. Can't see no reason for quarreling. You don't sound like you might be from Texas. Yeah, we are. Texas Rangers? That's a dirty word, mister. Ease it off, Morg. Morg don't care for Rangers. Neither is Zach. Your pal had it right. I'm Butch Henry. He's Zach Newcomb. A light down. I never turned Texas boys away from my camp. Well, if he's really Butch Henry, I guess it's all right. You know, you sound pretty big-headed for a trail ghost. I don't think I like Mr. Newcomb or whatever his name is. Ease it off, Morg. You'll have to make allowances, Mr. Henry. Morg and I, we, we've been traveling far and fast. That ain't Morg's true nature. That's just his belly growling. They're hungry. Go tell Simon to rustle them up some grub. Pronto. We sure do thank you kindly. Reckon we could eat a whole steer. He's Morg Pickett, and I'm Bill Jepson. 
They call me the Amarillo Kid. Howdy. Howdy. I can we better show Mr. Henry our calling card, huh? Sure. Calling card, huh? Well, that's as good as any with me, better than most. You fellas seem to know your way around, giving the Rangers the go by. Zach, take a look at that. Guess there ain't no harm in having a friendly little chat while Sime fixes up your grub. Come on. Pause. Yeah? They ain't wanted in Kansas. Well, what's a diff? They're on the run. So which one of you is the boss, anyhow? You or him? I'm Butch Henry. Ain't you never heard of me? Sure he has. You're the top gun in East Texas. 17 notches? 19. I got me two more the other day. 19 notches. I invited these boys to eat here. You making any objection? Nope. That satisfy you? Yeah, I reckon so. Take care of the horses. Come on over the fire. Give me a plain walnut grip on a coat. Then you can notch it without chipping it. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Henry. Should we ask him? It'll make no difference to me, either way. Ask him what? We're nobodies compared to you, Mr. Henry. But I was wondering if you could use a couple extra hands. Well, I don't know. Either of you any good with a gun? Well, we got us two sheriffs. From ambush? Morgan had too much practice. But I'm a fair hand at shooting. Yeah, let's see you hit that. Sure. Not bad. How about your draw and shoot? Well, I can do a drop the dollar. You're bragging a little, ain't you, kid? Give me a dollar. Hey, that's pretty good. You got the shot off before it ever hit the ground. What do you say, Zach? We can try him. But we don't want his pal. Nothing doing. Morgan and me left Texas together. We stay together. Listen to Newcomb. What does he do, bury the bodies for you? That's enough. Quit it! We're friends, Morg. Look, the kid can handle a gun and we can use him. I'll use Morg as one of the cattle guards. I'll blow on your soup. It's too hot. You fellas are hired. Go catch a nap someplace. You look beat. Thanks, Mr. Henry. He's off, will you? Looks like Butch is called a power. What was the idea of getting so tough with Newcomb? He's the real boss. How do you figure that? Butch does too much talking to be a fighting man. Yeah, only 19 notches. But I think Zach does his killing for him. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're talking Shut up and listen to him. Boys, all we could get from that cow trader was 500 bucks. Oh, no, that's right. Oh, no. Now, Zach will cut it up share and share alike. We just couldn't unload them steers. Quiet, quiet. I've got an idea how we can pick up some quick money. There's plenty of this stuff in Dodge. All spread out in them gambling joints just ready to be took. Now, what do you say? Zach told us it wasn't a good idea. Is that right, Zach? Is that what you said? No. Why, you dirty double-crossing liar, you said? You... I run this outfit, and I don't take no back talk. And no lies about Newcomb. Any of you other boys scared to go to Dodge? All right. Bury him. Zach got off the first shot. Yeah, he usually does. Why does he let Butch take all the credit? They're watching us going to sleep. I think we ought to hit him tonight while the gambling's going full blast. Not with those new men in camp. Well, we can use the kid. Maybe. Not the big one, though. All right. 
I'll leave the big one on Cattle's eyes. No. I want to talk to him first. Now, look. There's already been one killing in camp. That kid's going to stand by his pal. You call the kid over here. I want to talk to Pickett when he's all by himself. Now, Zach. You do like I say, real quick. All right. All right. Hey, kid! Kid, come on over here. You want Morg, too? No, he can work on the fire. Go on, I'll cover you. What part of Texas was you born in? Part of Texas? Yeah. Where was you born? El Paso, why? That's funny. I was born in El Paso. Maybe we're neighbors. Name me some of the streets. If you live there, uh, you know their names. I'm asking you. No, you... You're trying to call me a liar. Sarah fight, kid. I don't like you, Mr. Newcomb. I told you that. Now you get the gall to ask the questions. I don't like that. No. Sit down, Mr. Newcomb. Before I'm tempted to break both your legs. Hold it! Any you want to pick up his fight? Mr. Henry's coming, Morg. I got no quarrel with Mr. Henry. I ought to finish you off, you polecat. You don't like Newcomb? I despise him. None of the men ever liked him. Patch him up. Put him on his horse. I don't want him around my camp. I never saw two handier men with guns. Why, you're almost as good as I am. Well, that's a big compliment, Mr. Henry. Sure is. Downright flattering. No, I mean it. I got a special proposition to make you. You heard us talking about a raid on Dodge? Well, if you're game, I'll cut you in on equal shares. Well, fine. Hey, you hear that, Morgan? We're in. Well, I don't know, kid. What's wrong? We're right in a big town like that. Why don't we just round up them steers and point them south toward the Indian nations? You scared of Wyatt Earp? Earp? Who's that? He's the John Law in Dodge with a big reputation. But he ain't as fast as I am. Well, I'm not fretting about no Earp. We better think about it. And if I was you, I wouldn't put Mr. Newcomb on a horse. The only way he's feeling, he's liable to head straight for Dodge and rouse up that whole town. That's right. I'd better see that he's tied up. You keep working on Morg, kid. You'll come around, Mr. Henry. You aiming to bulldoze that whole outfit into town? I slipped up on a serious point. Should have told those cattlemen back in Dodge what you and I were going to try and do. You couldn't do that. They'd have talked. Yeah, but I should have trusted them. No, I made a big mistake. One of those cattlemen come hightailing it out here with a posse. Well, let's grab Butch and Zack. Make a run for it like you first planned, huh? Oh, Butch has got more men than Mr. Byroad figured. He's got nine here in camp. I figure at least another ten out in cattle guard. Well, then we'll have to get them all started on the raid. Yeah. If there's a posse headed this way, some hoodlum is sure to beat him here with the news. Yeah, that's right. You, uh... Go tell Butch you won me over. Right. How much further to the bend? Maybe five miles. But we're all pretty tired, Hick. 
Why, it was a fool to try an inside job, but if they haven't killed him and Masterson, we owe them a chance. I hope it isn't too late. Now, there's just one more thing. Some of you men been out on cattle guard, so you ain't met Morg Pickett and the Amarella Kid. Morg is a man that crippled Newcomb in a stand-up gunfight. I was gonna shoot the rat myself, only Morg took the job off my hand. Now, I want you all to do me a favor. When we pick up them other men and we hit Dodge, you leave Wyatt Earp to me, to Morg, and the kid. All right, so we ride. Hold it. I think I'm in Butch, not more than a mile behind me. How many of them are? I couldn't tell. Wyatt Earp with them? No, him and Bat Marston snuck out of town two days ago. Why? Hey! That was... Go kill him, just swing him. Yeah. Come on, men. Where's everybody get away with this? Hold it, Bert. I want her. It's too late. Take cover. Move around. I want them dirty John Law. We can't stay here. No place else to go. Quit on, Jack! Come on out! Are you crazy? Come on out, Earp! And I'll make it 20 notches. Drop him away. Hold your fire, men! I want Earp to come out. I'm awake, Earp! Aren't you gonna kill him? No. What I wanted to do to you in the Pollock ambush, but you wouldn't trust me. You go to get him, ma'am. You hit? No. We're not coming out of this way. Come on, all of you, out of there. Drop your guns. You there. Come on out. Line them up and tie them, boys. It was cold, Marshal. You're right, sir. We'd like to thank you. That's Butch Henry, but he's not really the tough one. The tough one is Zach Newton. He's tied up over there. So Butch Henry isn't really tough. A cattle thief with 19 notches on his gun. Well, he's just a big blowhard, sir. I'll tell you all about it back in town. Hey, I told you, he's just got a headache. Your circuit judge, Tobin, the hanging judge. You've been mighty fond of making tough speeches to the poor devils who have to swing because you say so. But now the rope's going around your own neck, Judge Tobin. You've been tried and convicted of horse stealing. We're going to give you time to say your prayers. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Don't waste time looking for Wyatt Herb. He wouldn't lift a finger to save it. Put the rope on. Most of the judges with whom Marshal Earp had to deal were honest, strong, and fair-minded men. But when Judge Tobin was assigned to ride a circuit which included Dodge City, Wyatt came up against a strange character. Tobin had set out to make a reputation for himself as a hanging judge. Men called him Rope Tobin and compared him with the notorious Judge Parker, who hanged 88 men in Oklahoma Territory. But in the case of Judge Tobin... The defendant will face the court. Mr. Bingham, you've been tried and found guilty of stealing a horse. You stole this animal from a traveler on the open prairie. You were well aware that a man's horse is his life. Cattle and buffalo stampede at sight of a man on foot. Men have been trampled to death in such stampedes. Furthermore, a man without a horse has no means of escape from savage renegade Indians. By your act, you condemned your victim to death. And only by the merest chance... I didn't steal that horse. I bought him. Silence. Marshal Earp, it's the judgment of this court that Mr. Bingham be hanged by the neck until dead. 
You will notify Sheriff Bassett that the execution will take place tomorrow any time between sunrise and sunset, and may the Lord have mercy on his soul. Remove the prisoner. Something on your mind, Mr. Earp? Yes, sir, there is. Well, out with it. Well, since you asked me, Your Honor, I think that Mr. Bingham might be telling the truth. What makes you think so? Well, I know he was riding the horse when we arrested him, and he didn't have a bill of sale, and we couldn't find the man that he said sold the horse to him, but, well, it seems to me... He that... had a fair trial, Mr. Earp. Had he been caught on the trail riding a stolen horse, he'd have been hanged from the nearest tree. Do you believe in lynch law, Mr. Earp? No, sir, I don't. I hate it. Well, so do I. And the only way to put down lynch law on this frontier is for legally constituted courts to do their duty. We must teach men to respect legal justice. Do you have any further comments, Marshal? Yes, Judge Tobin, with your permission, I have. But it involves criticism of this court. Maybe I better keep my mouth shut. Speak up. Speak up. Well, sir, with all respect, I don't believe in hanging a man on circumstantial evidence as in this case. You say you want the law respected. Well, that's what I want, too. But do you believe hanging a man on circumstantial evidence is the way to go about it? I disagree with your thinking. Well, you're the judge. Careful now. Well, anyway, it's not my jurisdiction. Crime was committed in Ford County, so it's up to Sheriff Bassett. <laughs> you do know a little about the law. Just enough to serve you fair notice, Judge. I don't believe in hanging for any other reason than first-degree murder. And only then on most conclusive evidence. Fair notice? Of what? Dodge City is in Ford County, and I'm not Sheriff Bassett. Good day, Your Honor. Did you tell him what for? As much as I dared, no sense in getting fined for contempt of court. What's wrong with that man, Wyatt? He's never seen a hanging, that's what's wrong with him. Any kind of circumstantial evidence satisfies him. No, he's a real hanging judge for sure. Well, Charlie Bassett says Bingham's wanted in Nebraska for two murders. I guess it all evens up. No, it doesn't. The judge should send him back to Nebraska for trial. Oh, now, Wyatt. Look, how would you like a friend of yours hanged on doubtful evidence? Well, now, I can't think of any of my friends who were apt to get hanged. There's nothing funny about this, you know. You send that poor fellow on over to Sheriff Bassett's lockup and wash your hands. Well, I just washed him. Wonder what kind of soap Judge Tobin uses on his. Huh? Never mind, go on. Between a winner. Six a loser. Eight a winner. I want to take a look at that deal box. Hand that back. I got a hunch this is a Mississippi bottom deal. I said hand that back. Why, you little shirt. Finley, put it away. He grabbed my deal box. Ease off. Take a walk. Take over, Earl. Keith, you and I better have a little talk. In there. It'll be a pleasure. Well, what's your complaint? The card game's crooked. It's been crooked ever since Chalk Beeson left for KC. And I'm gonna prove it to Chalk when he gets back with this. Well, let me see. Perhaps Finley has... Not him, you. Chalk left you here to run things. And Finley will deal him straight or crooked, just as you say. How much did you lose? A thousand. You never had that much. One thousand. It'll cost you a lot more if I tell Beeson. He'll make you pony up five times that. And put a yellow tag on you besides. All right, all right. But I can't get it for you right now. When? Tonight. The cashier's change shift at 8 o'clock. Now, you slip in the back way. I'll give you the money. You give me the box. Well, of course, Pete. When I get the money, you'll get this. Where's your relief man, Finley? He's late. I'll sit in for you. Thanks, Pete. Anything wrong? Keith Morgan's still mad. Take the alley home. All right, boys. Let's change the deal box. Nothing like new cards and a fresh box. 
Break open the deck. I'll take a stack, Pete. Sure. I'll we'll keep cash for you. Good. Morgan. I think he's dead. Morgan? Morgan. This is he's dead. Again. All right, you men stay out here. Break it up. Yeah. You men go on back in the saloon. Go on. Morgan was a good guy, too. I have hole in Morgan. I'm from a 41 Derringer. You know anybody that owns one? Five Spark Finley. He used to have one. Where's Finley? He went off shift about 8 o'clock. He's probably at home. Go pick him up. Finley wouldn't shoot anybody wide. I knew him in Abilene. In fact, he tipped me off to a gunslinger that was Look, empty. will you just go pick him up? Whatever you say. You quit wasting my time. I took this off of Morgan. You ever see it before? No, sir. You're lying. It's a Mississippi bottom dealer. Now, you want to explain how come Morgan had it? Marshal, I swear to you, I don't know anything about it. Look, three eyewitnesses out there told me they saw Morgan take it off Finley at the faro table. They also saw Finley pull a Derringer on Morgan. Marshal, Finley's my friend. Now, surely you don't expect me to incriminate him. Finley heard about the shooting. I met him in the alley. I don't think I had anything to do with it. You own a Derringer, Mr. Finley? Yes, sir. Hmm. Where is it? It's in the drawer in the faro table. And it's here to tell you what... Never mind. Let's go see it. Come on. Gun, Mr. Earp. Somebody stole it. Pete, you know the gun was in the draw when you took the slot from me. Don't you remember? You said Morgan was sore at me for me to take the alley home. Finley, Mr. Earp knows about the box. He does? I cheated Morgan, but I didn't kill him. You know me, Bat. I wouldn't kill anybody. I told as much to Marshal Earp. You threatened Morgan with a gun, didn't you? Yes, sir, but only to keep him from beating me up. Anders took the Derringer and put it in the drawer. Then Jake grabbed me and hustled me out. Ain't that right? Finley, you're talking too much. You need a lawyer. Lawyer? Mr. Finley, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. Why, it? So Rob Tobin can do the now same thing? Now you're the one that's talking too much, Mr. Masterson. Take him to jail. Come on. Mr. Earp. Uh, howdy, Mr. Craig. Terrible thing Finley done. You reckon Judge Tobin will hang him along with Bingham? Oh, easy, Mr. Craig. Yeah. Are you looking for clues? No, haven't found the murder weapon yet. It's a 41 Derringer. Finley wouldn't hide it around here this close. He knows I'm always filling and emptying this barrel. No, it's not in there. You keep your eye peeled out for a Derringer, huh? Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Mr. Earp. Well, Judge Tobin. Benton here has been pestering me to grant bail to some gambler name of Finley. What do you know about the case? Well, sir, Eve Morgan, a cowhand, was shot to death in an alley behind the Long Branch Saloon. He and Finley had an argument about a crooked deal box this afternoon. I arrested Finley on suspicion of murder. Suspicion? My client denies the charge, Your Honor. There's nothing but circumstances. That will be all, sir. 
It's a clear case of first-degree murder, isn't it? No, Your Honor, it isn't. Can't you present a clear-cut case about anything? Finley claims somebody stole his gun. There were a lot of people in position to do that, sir. Also, I haven't checked into the crooked gambling angle, and Nonsense! First-degree murder, no bail. I'll hear this case at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Have the defendant in court at that time. 10 o'clock? And I won't consider any motion for a delay or continuance, Mr. Benton. Crooked gambler. Murders a man in cold blood. We'll see. We'll see. Finley wants to talk to you, Mr. Benton. Well, I'll do the best I can. Oh, wait a minute. No, Judge Torben can't force you to trial. Not without reasonable time to prepare a defense, anyway. They call him rope, Torben, Mr. Earp. Stalling would only make his temper worse. You sentenced Finley to hang. He's already made up his mind. Well, and if it comes to that, we can ask for a stay of execution pending appeal. But you'd better find out who did kill Morgan, and right quick. Now, how do you feel? I'd like to put a rope around Tobin's neck. Hey, that may not be a bad idea. Huh? Judge Tobin has a lot of knowledge about law. But he's never had his nose far enough away from a law book to know anything about people. Has Finley got any good friends besides you? A dozen good ones, at least. Well, six ought to be enough. You and I can't do anything, but his friends might be able to teach Judge Tobin about circumstantial evidence. Save Finley. You mean frame the judge? Why, Mr. Masters, such talk from an officer of the law. And the boys who like Finley aren't officers of the law. Well, let's see what happens in court. Yeah. Have you reached a verdict? Guilty, Your Honor. Guilty of what? Oh, well, murder in the first degree. Well, oh, oh, order! Oh, That's how you instructed us to vote, ain't it? Oh, 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 order! Considering the evidence, there was no other verdict possible. You gentlemen have done your duty, and the court commends you. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant will rise. Mr. Finley, you are a card sharp and a crook. When the deceased caught you cheating, he took your deal box as evidence. Testimony indicates that Mr. Morgan intended to complain to the owner of the Long Branch Saloon. To prevent this, you waylaid him in an alley, and with malice aforethought, you shot him in the back. No, oh, sir. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Silence! The court would like to show mercy, but your crime does not deserve mercy. I sentence you to be hanged by the neck until dead. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Bell. I must ask for stay of execution pending appeal. That is your privilege, Miss Counsel for the Condemned. Any comment, Mr. Earp? No, sir. Don't you worry, Finley boy. We're with you. Silence! We're with you. You will take your seat until court's adjourned. Marshal Earp. Yes, sir. I have business in Abilene. Other cases on the docket will be postponed till my return. Remove the condemned. Court is adjourned. Bring him in. Get him out of there, boy. Hustle it up. Oh, Bat. They look pretty much alike, don't they? Yeah, I couldn't tell them apart. Nice work, Jim. Even to the brands and scars. Oh. Bar in on the judge's horse, bar each in my horse. Of course, I had to block out the white stocking on my horse. Select. Where's old man Ruger? Well, we left him sleeping in hay bed. We gotta move on. I'll hide the judge's horse. And don't forget, you've gotta stop Tobin before he crosses the city limits. Oh, we'll stop him. Bat. Why don't we really hang the old bus? No, just put a rope around his neck. Why now, I'll be right behind you. Don't you even rough him up. Remember, he's a circuit judge. We're going to be awful careful. How you coming, boss? All right. Get over here. Not so fast, stranger. No. Not so fast, stranger. That's my horse you're making off with. Are you men drunk, or is this some kind of a practical joke? It ain't funny. We hang horse thieves. Lay down. Nonsense! These are my horses. That one ain't. Lay down. Come on. Do you know who I am? No, and I don't care. You're stealing my horse. Nonsense. Both these horses are Bar N brand. I bought them from Colonel French at the Bar N Ranch. You've heard of him? Bar? Bar H? No. That brand's been tampered with. This is a frame-up. You're stealing my horse and accuse me of framing you. Rope's ready, Jim. Let's get it over with. 
Let go of me. Let go of me, I say. Let go of me. I'm Circuit Judge Tobin. No. Not Rope Tobin. The hanging judge? Well, boys, ain't that something? Rope Tobin turns horse thief. That tree over yonder looks right handy. You won't get away with this? Oh, hanging a man ain't too difficult. Uh, tie his hands? No, it's more fun when they got their hands free and try to fight the rope. Come on, we're wasting time. Hey! Well, what goes on here? Caught a horse thief, Marshal. Well, that's Judge Tobin. He wouldn't steal a horse. He did, though. That left-hand bay, my horse. Got my Bar H brand. This is a frame-up. Maybe the livery stable man gave me the wrong horse by mistake. Uh, go check the brand. Well, we don't hang horse thieves without some show of a trial. What about Finley and Bingham? They had a trial. Left one's bar H, the other's bar N. Well, I'm sorry, Judge, but I can't help myself. You're under arrest. Charge a horse stealer. Take that rope off him. Climb in your buggy and we'll head back to town. Go on. Ghastly mistake. Why, those hoodlums might have tried to hang me. And on the flimsiest of circumstantial evidence. What if this got into the newspapers an accusation like this? Rumor, gossip, the dignity of my office. Marshal Earp, I demand an immediate release. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but any charge by a citizen must be investigated. Oh, come now, we've had our differences, but surely you don't believe that I stole that horse? No, sir, I don't. But well, then why are you holding me on a charge that you admit's absurd? Blackmail. What? I have here an official police report. With a felony complaint signed by Jim Lawrence, the owner of the stolen horse. Just what are you after? Well, Judge, to begin with, I'm looking for a human being in you. What is this? Then there's the blackmail. But let's call it white blackmail, shall we? I want a stay of execution for Mr. Bingham. He should be sent back to Nebraska and tried there for murder. Is he wanted there? That's right, on two counts. And Sheriff Bassett didn't mention anything about it because he felt Bingham might just as well be hanged here as in Nebraska. Well, I don't agree with Charlie's idea of the law. I also don't agree with hanging men on flimsy circumstantial evidence. It'll ruin respect for law out here. And you and I, sir, in our different ways, are the law here, aren't we? Those Nebraska charges should have had priority. All right, I'll grant the stay, but not as a price for anything. Now, go ahead and do your duty as you see it. One other thing, sir. I ask you to release Finley on bail. A condemned murderer? Look, sir, I need your help. I think I know the man who really murdered Morgan. Now, if you turn Finley loose, the man I'm after will get scared, and a scared man always makes a wrong move. It's still blackmail. No, sir, it isn't. I've changed my mind. There won't be any police report, and I'll ask Jim Lawrence to withdraw his complaint. What would make a stubborn, opinionated man like yourself change his mind? My father's a judge back in Illinois. The kind of judge all of you should be. He didn't get his reputation by hanging men on circumstantial evidence. I guess I uh, tried to mold Judge Tobin in his image. I'm sorry for that. Excuse me, Judge. Wyatt, they're talking mighty mean at the Long Branch. They think Finley had a raw deal. Yeah, I expected that. All right, round up the rest of the deputies. Tell them to load with buckshot. No, no! I'll admit Finley to bail. Turn him loose. Thank you, sir. But if you've got another suspect, you better get him quick. I can always change my mind. It's good to see you. Finley, you're free. I'm only out on bail, but, but I sure thank you, guys. Still winning, huh? Yeah, little old Finley. Boy, howdy. Good to see you. 
Sure want to thank you, Pete, for getting me the lawyer and everything. Ah, uh, what's a friend for? Boys, the next round's on the house. How come old Rope Tobin let you out on bail? Well, it's... Mr. Earp says it's because they can't find my gun. How does that figure? It's a kind of a legal technicality. Mr. Earp suggested it to the judge, and the judge agreed. Unless they find my gun, they can't hang me. Sure hope they never find me. <laughs> sure. You ain't buying a drink, Speed. I am. Come on. Drinks are on me. All this ah, Come on, on <laughs> Howdy, Marshal. Bad. Howdy, Mr. Anders. We're still looking for that Derringer. Yeah, Finley was telling me about that. Marshal, why does old Judge Tobin want to hang little old Finley? Why, Morgan never was no good. Neither are you. Big gun, big talk. You scared Finley into cheating. He's off. You move aside. I'd like to take a look in there. Well, there's, there's nothing in there except a lot of trash. What are you so nervous about? Nothing, Marshal. Nothing at all. Well, what do you know? Finley must have stashed that in there. I'm, I mean, whoever shot Morgan must have put it in there. No, you stole it and shot Morgan. Are you crazy? Last night, right after the shooting, I came out here and that barrel was empty. So what does that prove? You knew I looked in there. You figured the safest place to hide this is where I'd already looked. An old man, Craig, threw some trash in there, and you came out and threw the Derringer on top of it. You're under arrest, Mr. Aaron. Yeah? Stand steady. My friend. Trying to get me home. Have I stolen any more horses? No, sir, I, uh... Found your horse hidden in the livery stable. In the Salva murder case with the dying man's confession, you even find my horse. That's sheer genius, Marshal Herb. Uh, your Honor, what is the penalty for framing a circuit judge on a horse theft charge? Well, I wouldn't hang the man who did it, but you can warn him any more shenanigans will draw a mighty stiff prison sentence. Oh. Well, I'll, uh, I'll tell him that when I see him. Get it up. Chào mọi người đã đến với kênh hướng dẫn tô màu của mình. Hôm nay thì chúng mình sẽ cùng tô màu ông già Noel là một chú gấu à, đang rất là vui vẻ bên cái cơn mưa tuyết này nhỉ. Tiền thì ngày nhớ lạm vui Đây, cái em cũng 
Thế tôi vẫn đang nói Còn bộ môn nít thì đứa nào lấy hơn hàng 